Hi, I'm sure you're uh, busy right now studying for your CFP examinations, whether it's FPE1 or FPE2. Uh, I've had a couple questions about principal residence exemption, so I've come up with a little example here, which hopefully will help. Now you're going to see on this page a couple of bits of numbers already. So we've got the formula here for the principal residence exemption. It's not a terribly difficult formula. Take the number of years exempted plus 1 divided by the number of years owned times the total capital gain. Despite the fact that the math is not particularly challenging, sometimes seeing how it gets applied can be difficult, and I understand that. So we're going to work through a little example here, just because I have had a couple of questions very specifically related to this. So we have family here, which, realistic or not, I don't really care, but owns two properties, a house and a cottage. And the house, they've owned for quite a while. They bought it in 1990. So they've owned it now for, if we're doing this in 2012, um, that's 23 years, really, if you count the years at each end, the 1990 and the 2012. I know that 2012 minus 1990 would be 22 years, but you want to count the years on either end here, and this becomes important for using this formula. So really, that's a total of 23 years in which they have owned that house, and that's what's going to be important. The cottage they purchased more recently in 1999, they have owned the cottage then for a total of 14 years, or in a total of 14 years. And again, that's what's going to be important here. So we can see a much larger gain on the cottage, and the cottage has been owned for a substantially shorter amount of time. And because of those two circumstances, you're going to want to use the capital gains exemption primarily for the largest gain. It makes sense to have the largest gain with the most potential tax have the capital gains exemption apply to it. So the exemption, if we're going to basically wipe out this gain on the cottage, we're going to have to say that we're using the capital gains exemption for every year in which the cottage was owned, except that, remember, there's this little plus one in the formula. So even though we own the cottage for 14 years, we're only going to have to exempt it for 13 years. So we would take 13, the number of years we're going to declare this as our principal residence. Keeping in mind, you can only have one principal residence at one time. And we're going to add in the plus one. And now we're going to take the number of years owned, which we know already is 14. And you would multiply that by the total capital gain, which in this case is $440,000. I think you can see this math is going to be fairly straightforward. So you've got 14 fourteenths of $440,000. Basically, the exemption for this cottage is going to be $400,000. Sorry, $440,000. Which allows us to completely wipe out the capital gain on the disposition of this cottage. No tax consequences here. However, with this house, it's going to be a little bit different. With the house, we still are going to use the exemption formula, but we are going to have some capital gains here. We can't wipe out this capital gain. Basically, in the years in which the cottage was our principal residence, the house can't be. You can only have one principal residence at one time. So. With the house, we have the years from 1990 until actually 1999. Remember, we didn't have to use 1999 for the cottage to get the whole principal residence wiped out because of that plus one. So with the house, we would say we're going to exempt the years from 1990 to 1999 exclusive. That would be 10 years. You can count that. You can hash that out on a piece of paper. Or, as you would have seen me do in my exam, you could count it off on your fingers. And we get to add that plus one again. 
So now we've got 10 plus 1. We owned the house for quite a bit longer. We owned the house for a total of 23 years. And then we would multiply that by the gain associated with the disposition of the house, which is $300,000. So now we've got 11 20 thirds of $300,000. That's the portion that's going to be tax-free here. So in this case, we're going to have a $143,478 exemption. That's how much we'll reduce our capital gain by, or reduce the capital gain on which we're going to have to calculate our tax. So in this case, you're still going to have some capital gain to deal with, but we can see that we've eliminated an awful lot of that capital gain. Now, sometimes people will ask me about what if I got the house valued at some point along the way? It doesn't matter. It's always assumed when we're calculating the principal residence exemption that any kind of capital appreciation was linear. So even if you could show that the actual growth in value happened in different years by property appraisals or whatever the case is, that does not matter. All that's going to happen is we're going to make this very linear assumption about how the capital gain is calculated. So in the end, we have no capital gain on the cottage and only about half of the capital gain that we would otherwise have had on the house and we can see where this plus one in the formula benefits us to some extent. I hope that helps. Thank you very kindly.